everyone. I'm Sula, host of Sula's Big Adventures, and today I'm going to be reviewing the Lasmandi GM8 Equatorial Telescope Mount. This mount weighs 45 pounds, mount head and tripod, and can hold a 50 pound payload capacity. It was made in Burbank, California. And according to Lasmandi, every Lasmandi mount is personally inspected by Scott Lasmandi, owner and founder of Lasmandi Telescope Mounts. This mount comes with an AC power supply and this DC car lighter power supply. Although I just use the AC power supply. It comes assembled except they make you install the stepper motors, the RA and deck motors, which was rather difficult because you have to put a tiny hex wrench, which they give you, at an angle to get these two motors in. But once you get them in, that's all you have to do other than bolt the mount to the tripod when you're assembling it. The motors are tucked in so that when the mount is slewing, there's no contact between the counterweight shaft or your camera or diagonal with the motors. It comes with the Gemini 2 computer. It's fully computerized and go to with, I think, a 30,000 object database. And it is extremely accurate and they cater to astrophotographers because astrophotographers need accuracy for long exposure astrophotos. That's not why I bought it, although that is a nice feature that it's very accurate. Everyone wants that in their equatorial go-to computerized mount, uh, but this is very accurate and when you turn it on, you you polar align, of course. Um, it does not come with a polar scope. I had to buy the polar scope separately, and it was $300, which I thought was a, a, a lot for a polar scope. And the polar scope that you get, nowhere on it does it say where it's made, and I'm suspicious that they proudly say the mount is made in Burbank, but nowhere does it say where the polar scope is made. So I'm thinking maybe it was made in China, but I can't verify that because it doesn't say on the scope. But my main complaint with this scope, polar scope, is that instead of a reticule with circles on it, it has a picture of Cassiopeia and the Big Dipper. And you look through the polar scope and you look at the sky and see where the Big Dipper is. And hopefully you can see the Big Dipper and then you turn the polar scope, not the whole axis, which I think is nice. You only have to turn the polar scope. It turns inside of the mount to put the Big Dipper where it is in the sky. I don't find that to be particularly accurate. You're just eyeballing it, and then you put Polaris in a little slot, and then it has four lines off to the side that don't have dates on them, and a second star goes on one of those lines that are different, different epochs. It goes from 2010, 2020, 2030. I hope to be stargazing after 2030, so that's one problem. But that's the secondary star. But the main problem is the dates are not next to the lines. It's up to you to figure that out. And in case you want this mount, <laughs> the two lines that are closest together are 2020 and 2030. So the secondary star goes closest to the second to last uh, line for the secondary star, which is near the letters ER, which has to do with the Southern Hemisphere. <laughs> you have to figure all that out yourself because nowhere do they tell you any of this. Also, when you buy the mount, it does come with a quick start guide to help you put it together and to get started with the Gemini 2 but everything else you have to look at these YouTube videos which have advertisements which is annoying and secondly 
you have to wade through numerous <laughs> YouTube videos to find out what you want to know. And there is one about polar aligning, and he does explain how you do what I just said, put the Big Dipper where you see it in the sky, and then put Polaris in the slot. Um, but I, I think there should be a, a manual that explains more about polar aligning. And I think the reason why Laz Mandy does that is that they cater to astrophotographers. So my number one complaint was that it didn't come with a polar scope. I had to pay $300 for one, and it doesn't have a reticule, and I wish it had a reticule. And the database in the computer is bizarre. Maybe I'm wrong, but I couldn't find double stars in there. It has some things that I've never heard of <laughs> that probably are things astrophotographers want to look at, but... I mainly want to use it for visual, and that's why I bought it. Correction. I just remembered that it did not come with this AC power supply. I had to pay for it separately, so I bought it because I prefer the AC power supply. My main complaint with this mount is that this hand controller is so bright that it will blind you. It is a form of light pollution. And in fact, it's so bright that I bought this red cellophane so I can cover it every night when I use it because it's just too bright. Even when you set the LCD brightness at the lowest setting, it is blindingly bright and it's not red. Like the SenScan controller is red. This one is colorful. It's blue and green and it, which is nice and um, it's very easy to use and it's touch screen so you touch the buttons that's very nice it's a very nice hand controller but come on you don't want something that bright when you're stargazing for God's sake also you don't get anywhere to put it so I had to put velcro strip on the tripod leg and that's where I put it and then some cellophane over the top unless you want to go blind <laughs> the circle on it I will get one of those because I like those and I find them very accurate and I know how to use them so those are my complaints which are few compared to the things that I love about this mount so what I love about this Lozmandy GM8 mount is it's beautiful look at it it's a fine machine you can just see that it's beautifully crafted and solid very solid this thing definitely can hold 50 pounds i don't own anything that weighs 50 pounds i think this stellar view with an eyepiece and diagonal and a finer scope weighs maybe 15 or 16 pounds but i can upgrade if i want to because i have no doubt it can hold 50 pounds like they say it only comes with a seven pound counterweight which may seem like not enough for a mount that says it can hold 50 pounds, but the shaft itself is very sturdy and hefty, and it can act as a weight itself. And I had no problem balancing my Mead 115 millimeter with one seven pound weight. I bought this one because even though it weighs 45 pounds, that is fine with me because it truly can hold 50 pounds. It's just well built. Look at it. It's beautiful. It's solid. It's well built. Other things that I like about it are that these azimuth knobs are so smooth. They're buttery smooth to move. It's not difficult at all. Even with the heavy weight on here, you can easily turn these azimuth knobs when you're polar aligning. And it has a large knob for the altitude adjustment. And it only has one, so that makes it very easy, even with a heavy telescope on there, to turn it up and down. So I love the Altaz adjustments. They're very smooth and very easy to use. That is a very nice feature. It has two bubble levels on the mount, so you can level it. And like I said at the beginning, it's incredibly accurate and you can find a bright star and then you 
go to a line and then alignment and it'll put that star into its uh, sky model building for better accuracy and I've taken it out and I've found it to be incredibly accurate it has engraved setting circles which is nice on the deck and the and on the RA and it's just a beautiful well-built well-made mount very accurate locating and tracking I took it out the other night and I I had some problems but they were something to do with me not the mount I, I don't know why I couldn't get my camera to focus and then a man came and wanted me to show him something and anyway I had some problems but I did use it to take some pictures of the ring nebula just to try it out and I'll show you that picture I didn't spend a lot of time processing it because uh, it was so far away and tiny and today I'm excited to be setting up for the first time my new Lasmandi GM8 motorized telescope mount made in the USA uh, it weighs about 40 pounds, but it has a 50 pound payload and it's very sturdy as you can see. So now I'm going to get started putting it together. It came in the box a couple of days ago and they make you attach the Servio motors yourself, but I think I got them in there. And now I'm just going to put it on the tripod. And then screw that in with three bolts it came with. Okay, I got the bolts in. I got the mount head attached to the tripod. Now I'm going to attach the computer. I'm going to attach the RA and deck cables. The RA and deck cables attached actually deck and RA now I'm gonna attach the counterweight shaft it only came with one seven pound weight but the bar itself is very heavy and this is a very sturdy mount so actually I didn't try it out but I hope I can balance my 115 millimeter mead on it if not I'm in big trouble I don't know if you can see that. It has emblazoned on it, made in Burbank, California. And these knobs are to tighten the uh, azimuth. Okay, some people came over and were asking me questions about my telescope, but meanwhile, I leveled the tripod. It has two nice bubble levels on it. And look at this, it's balanced in declination with just one seven pound counterweight pretty nice i can put an even bigger telescope on here now let's see about ra this has weird um clutches this is the ra clutch right here I'm sorry, the declination clutch. I've never had a mount that had clutches like this, but anyway. Look at this. I just stuck it on here and it looks balanced. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. It's just really nicely made. It's all metal. It's just a beautiful, beautiful mount. Okay, tonight I'm going to be testing out my Lasmandi GM8 mount with my StellarView 102mm telescope with my Sony A6600. I've only had a couple of chances to use the Lasmandi mount. The first time didn't go well because I didn't know you had to set the limits because um, my other mounts I didn't have to do that. But this one you have to set the limits because it can go past 90 degrees for astrophotographers who want to do meridian flips but anyway I did set the limits so now that's fixed and now I get to try it out and see how it does for photography I hope uh, it's made for astrophotography as a very strange database but 
Anyway, um, it's very accurate mount, very sturdy, and can hold 50 pounds. But I think I only have maybe 15 or 16 pounds on it right now, so it should do fine. But I'll let you know later. Over here, I have my trusty Sirius EQG mount and my Mead 115 millimeter. And while that one's taking pictures, I hope to be looking at things in this mount. So I'll check in with you later and let you know how it went. Um, <laughs> this mount is an incredible mount and yes it was $2,400 which is much more than some other mounts on the market but to me it was well worth it to have a solidly built accurate well-made USA made mount I love it despite the brightness of the hand controller so I highly recommend the Lonsmandy GM8 Go to Equatorial Telescope Mount. Just a couple more things. The customer service was a pleasure to deal with. They were fantastic. And I got this free Osmandy Astronomical t shirt <laughs> with my purchase. Woo! <laughs> so, I recommend the GEM 8. Los Mandy telescope mount. This is their bottom of the line <laughs> mount, uh, which was all I needed because it holds 50 pounds and I, I can't lift much more than that. So I just could do fine with the bottom model, but they make much sturdier ones that can handle enormous telescopes and astrophotography equipment. They make the G. 11 and they make a titan which is just a monster mount but um those are a lot more expensive can hold a lot more payload i think their their top of the line one holds 100 pounds and uh it's not anything i'm interested in but the gm8 like this one is more than adequate for my needs so that's it for now i hope you found this helpful <laughs> if you're looking into a Laws Mandy telescope mount. I'll see you in the next episode. Until then, I hope you have access to dark skies and get out there and enjoy them. So long till next time. Sula, signing off.